can one find an art which is connected to politics, which relates to politics, but in which the same ambiguities and uncertainties that one finds when describing the rest of the world exist in the political sphere. And that's not the norm in political art. So it writes Magic Flute in 1791. The Magic Flute looks at the uh, Enlightenment in Germany in its most optimistic moment, when it looks as if the world is going to be subject to human agency and rationality will prevail and human brotherhood will triumph. In the opera, the uh, key character of Sarastro embodies both rational benevolence and all power. And Mozart was writing the opera just around the time of the start of the French Revolution before the excesses of it had become clear, when it seemed possible to have a benevolent dictator, someone who would combine wisdom with authority and wisdom with violence. So there's a way one could do a colonial production of the whole opera, in which one understands Sarastro as the colonial overlord and the chorus as colonial subjects. And it goes a certain distance, but there are many parts of the opera where that falls down. But what is implicit in the opera is the whole question of the authority of Sarastro and the certainty of the Enlightenment. What the history of the last 200 years has shown is that the one thing that is completely toxic, the most toxic combination in the world, is the combination of certainty of being right and a monopoly of power. Whether it's Stalin or Hitler or Pol Pot, each of them have believed they have been Sarastros in their own way. They know what's best for everyone. And they have the power to, to act accordingly. And so the character of Sarastro is kind of this benevolent figure that hides a monster. It's not to say the Enlightenment project itself is necessarily false or doomed, but there are disasters that come through the Enlightenment. Thank you.